hören heute einen persönlichen Erfahrungsbericht aus der Initiative Freifunk. Ein Projekt des Chaos Darmstadt e.V. So what we're going to look at is um, what's happened in the past year, 2015, Freifunk Darmstadt uh, network community, where have they met with resistance or with support in administration, in politics. So there are enough areas to address where there are a lot of obstacles to overcome. But uh, a central question to us is what, well, what do refugees actually need? What's important to them? How do they utilize network resources? How do they use the internet? And so we are also interested in lessons learned. What um, have we learned through experience so that the next year can, uh, the next year can be even better? So I'd like to welcome our speaker, Peter Löwenstein. And we'd like a round of applause, please. Thank you. Hello from Freifunk Darmstadt. That's where I'm from, Chaos Darmstadt. So we are initiative and project. Uh, and we, we think it's an initiative because it's it doesn't really have an end so far. My personal experience, because I'm going to give some positions that not, isn't shared by, aren't shared by everybody, and I just want to stress that point. So that's the overview over the last 12 months. So that's not necessarily doesn't necessarily mean that we did uh, Freifunk for refugees in this time frame, but this started only in the summer. And for me, it was different because I was also candidate for the parliament of the state parliament. And yeah, Freifunk was one of my um, uh, political points, and I brought this to the media attention. So then the refugee wave arrived, and there was the question, what do we do about that? The refugee homes are not well equipped with Wi-Fi, and so what do we do about that? It's not easy to, to discuss or to organize, because we do this in a lo local plenary with everybody. We did. Um, we get made contacts to local companies and similar, and we got input from uh, that made us uh, continue and made us stronger. So I, I'm not going to talk so much about the technical details today. I can maybe I can summarize them in so such a way that with the Freifunk routers we did it similar to, to how we did it at home, but then we did a lot of technical stuff that we didn't even think was possible before. So it's possible to do really complex uh, systems that isn't that much work to do. The only real problem is the the load that's gonna go to the servers, and but that wasn't really my work. So others from Freifunk Darmstadt did this really well. So it's more about pinpointing the decision makers in the administration and with discussions so how how is it possible to do more effective rife funk uh, for refugees and to to streamline this in the future so this is like the area where we active the white spot in the middle is darmstadt and so the area around it is the D 
district, uh, Darmstadt Dieburg, and other other districts, uh, Kreisbergstraße and Offenburg, which is South Hesse. So then there is Frankfurt, Bavaria. Next to it, like Rhineland, uh, Salz, Palatine. All right. So it's like a relatively closed area, Darmstadt, and all the all the areas around it that are relatively different from how they are connected to each other or connected to the internet. So it's like 16 megabit maybe, or it's a little more in the more in the companies, obviously, or universities. So in the political area, it's very different between the, the districts. Like Darmstadt has a green majority magistrate, a green uh, ma mayor, and in Darmstadt Dieburg there's an SP, SPD Social Democrat uh, minister with green support and has around 130 homes. So there's, for example, one place in Barmhausen which like 1,500 refugees in a former barracks. So in Darmstadt itself, it's like several homes from 350 to 500 inhabitants and many small ones. I had asked the, like the different parties and the uh, groups of the parties in the in the parliaments and so in so it's important because it's important point in the upcoming elections, local elections. And but we try to stay um, independent of uh, every political spectrum. So I can only recommend this to every Freifunk initiative. But it's not an apolitical thing itself, any either. So we just need bandwidth, and in the in the rural areas, it's very important to ask like people you know or ask local IT companies um, if it's possible to collaborate with them to use their, some part of their bandwidth. So that then you have to convince them that it makes sense for them to to provide bandwidth and of a Freifunk routers. Then second important thing is that Freifunk initiative is no provider. So we're going to help you with installing the router and setting it up and the, the routers are bought and we just give like free support with problems so to ask uh, it's best to ask it with problems when you're going to our local meetings and like, but administration and companies not necessarily agree with that. So that's like one of the homes as found in uh, OpenStreetMap that we started uh, connecting in November with the bandwidth provided by some uh, people living next to it that we beamed to to the home. So the red dots is uh, one client from the refugee home that's connected to to the Freifunk node. 
it was a small solution that we started with and yeah it's repeated at another one another uh, home so we just wanted to do found a find a solution at first and then we have maybe we have 300 400 with the start and then you have so you know then if you have 16 kilobit for 300 foreign people it's not very very much and you don't get it very far so we try to expand and we had some success with that in the lower part it's a beam from a local provider supporting us that's like to the going to the local barracks it's 2.2 kilometers and we set it up like that and on the left at the green uh, area it's the that's the first original um, notes from the local inhabitants so soon uh, some time ago some the, the town of Darmstadt asked uh, because it working so well could you maybe uh, provide uh, bandwidth to another home as well that we set up recently and that's like one of the at the top we have like quite some bandwidth that's what you see here at the left bottom left the different homes the wave curve the number of refugees logged in and at the peak times there were 1000 uh, 981 uh, refugees connected. So the applause doesn't belong to me really, but the uh, Freifunk initiative altogether. So I'm more the the publicity person. But um, the the outliers here that you can uh, you can see these, that's just the daily irregularities because of sp specific time. Obviously, at night there's not as much going on. But what can you what you can e equally uh, recognize quite well here is where we had tef technical dis difficulties ourselves, like from October first until until the day before before yesterday. This was the actual. Uh, amount that we can that we could uh, could provide so and we're still on the lookout for 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 supportive partners for associations and collaborators um some of those who who who'd like to to join in with us um on a, on a political level but even just on a neighborly uh, cooperative local very local level so this this can be uh, the mayors or the the social uh, charities and of course politicians and so the the, the work you're doing the the press work uh, it, it's a matter of, of publicity and i can just tell you that um as soon as you have the mayor on your side the the communal services will, will support you the even the fire firemen will support you and it's a lot easier to reach common kind of goals and that just by the experience that you know that support comes top down in administration you can utilize that so we also try to contact and inform the, the local council and trying to improve things for individual homes and so in October we basically just started creating reality uh, three um, sp uh, sports uh, training training halls that were turned into homes and well there was an information problem this this had to be returned to the local council office to local admi administration and there's a lot of information processing that no one knew what was well in this in this from these 130, the places they were not provided, or they were, well, there were supposed to be 130 individual connections provided, but it 
turned out that we couldn't s s provide that. But we don't really see the problem because if the, if the, the infrastructure is there, if the landline is there, for instance, um, there shouldn't be the, the sort of difficulty to prevent us from, from giving donation, giving the routers as a donation and just setting them up there. So this is quite difficult and quite frustrating sometimes. So in some cases we had even in Darmstadt, uh, there was, um, well, almost riots broke out between young people in, in the home because just the living conditions were so appalling. Just the level of frustration um, of things, uh, well, that have to be addressed and have to, have to be changed. It's quite, well, hard to find a way to, to reach your goals. But, well, we might be angry, but we can't enforce things just by, by pressure. So we're trying to talk about what, well, what we can, what we can attain. And what people are basically different organizations, um, private charities are selected by, by, the, by the city or by the administration to, to provide and to maintain these, these homes. That's from clothes and from food and why not uh, include internet in these just provisions, in just the things that have to be included if you organize and set up one of these homes. And I think the internet is important also because just also giving an access to the culture where, where these people find themselves in, because if you want to find out something about the society that you're currently being dropped into, the internet is a very easy access and something that cannot be provided in the same way from administration uh, procedures which take a lot longer. And of course, it's a matter of accessibility and communication. Just um, being able to speak to someone at home from your from your, from your home country, just keeping in touch. And well, regarding other roles in in um, support in the support community, the the the, the fire forces were quite important, and especially the the coordinators and we eventually did manage to get all these stakeholders somehow on the same page and well enable this this co collaboration to be functional for instance just how to get this organized, uh, set up a home for 500 refugees, just the sheer logistics of this setup and also do it in well in advance and not, you know, start when there are already all these people in front of your door, basically. So back to the question, what, what someone individual, what every single one of you might be able to, to manage and support in this. I think it's a lot more than you think. Everything, any, any one of you, if you just have a little bit of time, if you have a little bit of energy or interest in this, in this matter, if you're, if you're in touch with a, with a church charity or with, with any of these work circles, refugee support groups, just go and approach these organizations. It's really important. It's, and you're sure to find someone and be able to support in, in various ways. Well, what you can see here is like a, an inst um, a ready-made um, refugee internet cafe set up basically by one of the Freifunk community members. Und er hat es erreicht, dass dann dort in der Begegnungsstätte alles bereitgestellt wurde. And this Freifunk person was collaborating with a, with a, with a home administration and making, well, being at least uh, serious and professional enough to, to, to get along with them or to, to make progress. 
And so they managed to get these three pr uh, seats, these three internet um, cafe seats approved. And now they're so successful with this that they want to extend it to 10 more, uh, to 10 more computer places. And so it's rather clear that the, the use that this this empowerment and this, uh, well, these opportunities to, to connect and to educate yourself, that these are very uh, central to any uh, um, integration processes. So talk to the network if they don't have possibility to talk to journalists. If you manage that well, then then the media is very eager to actually work with that as well. Like a few days after the after our first meeting, uh, we ha got this uh, this uh, article about our work that we connected the first uh, former barracks. So then we were contacted by the mayor and other groups. So, and yeah, okay, Darmstadt Freifunk is actually doing something, great. That's what they told us. So, five um, counties and from Darmstadt, we had uh, a lot of. Um, a, a lot of uh, support and requests. So one of one of the groups we actually had to give away because to to, to another Freifunk group because it was not possible for us to support it anymore. Like the servers would have to be extended, and it's not easy to do that all on a voluntary basis. So we also had. Um, resolutions in the council, local councils. So yeah, they thought, okay, it's a great idea, Freifunk is great, and we want to want to do it, want to provide it for refugees. My personal opinion is that you can't really rely on that. So it's maybe great for them if it's if it's in the gets in the media or or in the in the party program but they always have the possibility to change their mind later on and it doesn't really matter if it's the greens or the, the social democrats or whoever and most of the time they will even be proud of changing their mind so with the greens like on the district county level or higher you can work very well but um, below that, it depends on the personal, on the persons involved. And with the Christian Democrats, I'm really surprised. Like, um, I had some some hesitations, but it's like a really, they really said, told me it's a good possibility for them to integrate, to integrate refugees better. The pirate party is only in the big cities still active in a little bit, so that they that they might help uh, help help us. And with the social democrats, yeah, what I said, it doesn't really matter. Um, like depending on whether it was set in the federal or or other levels, and then they just change their minds later on. The left, <laughs> the the very left, and the DKP are very difficult. Do you want to know more about it? Okay, that's going away from your from your question time. We have a coalition between DKP and leftists and the basis of Darmstadt Dieburg. So we have to ask the questions if uh, if we are not in the situation that the refugees are uh, set better off than people getting hearts for so the DKP didn't think that was really funny that's fu that funny so they the part the person should uh, be removed from the list and so the coalition broke apart because of this uh, 
this person's opinion. But even then, I didn't want to, uh, I wouldn't join with DKP to try out setting up um, setting up Freifunk, but I'm, I don't really think DKP is, uh, is like on the position to, to go into that, but that's just my personal opinion. So, internet service providers are not all competitors. So they are not. It's not possible for them to to let the people into their net without logging, without registration. So uh, all that stuff that we don't do with Freifunk. And the sales teams also are not really set up for that. To as as a commercial company. And then yeah, Freifunk or like Wi-Fi hotspot, okay, we don't really know what that is. Then we have first have to ask the server, the, the persons, the, the handy workers, if they can do the cables in the homes. And so it's quite difficult to work with them. So with us, the, the fire safe, the fire brigade just put up the uh, ladders and then it was possible to get the cables in the right positions for the routers and that was that. So what's the alternatives? That would be to get the local refugees to help themselves to do their own Freifunk communities um, so that they can connect with that and provide with that. And so, for example, in one case we had it, it was like one person uh, who was like very good with that and in Arabic set up VPN connections. Um, and yeah, provided VPN access for, for other inhabitants and to uh, conflict regions. So there's some really good people and every community shouldn't let them just stay uh, bored in the in the homes but should like try to engage them because of their point a lot of they have a lot of potential so with a look to the future with a few seconds that I've left so Freifunk Darmstadt got a lot of support from the mayor, so we didn't have to use a lot of uh, donations to so to set up Wi-Fi at the homes. But maybe we are like, um, maybe we get we, we we get dependent on on the state support, and that can also be difficult. And is it then still Freifunk? And yeah, that's. The problem and maybe if the state of Hesse should try a pilot project, like how could we set up a solutions that are can be used all over the country and that are that scale well and that don't have to be started in every community again. So, so it's much easier, you don't have to talk that much. There's just you get a bundle of solutions, uh, schooling material and similar and I wish that we see a lot more of that in the federal, also on the federal level in two, for 2016. So I wish to get a camp um, to, to exchange experiences, how to set up communities and not only to set up the first stuff, but then how to enable people and empower people to help themselves. So I'm at the end. We need a internet solution because it's a humanitarian, uh, humanitarian thing. So we need Freifunk to 
provide internet solutions for the refugees and let them help the, help themselves and we can it's easy it helps to integrate the very very experienced people with a lot of potential into our societies and let's not get them bored thanks leider haben wir keine zeit mehr für well sadly there's no more time left for questions But if, if you any have any questions, uh, Peter will be outside in front of the hall and you can, you can ask him and discuss uh, in, in person. And I would like to say thanks in particular because uh, this was a difficult situation today. Um, he left uh, his, his laptop fell apart just before the talk and this was a borrowed one. And also, of course, I'd like to thank everyone um, as as uh, who's uh, part, uh, participating, who's working on Freifunk Initiative for refugees, for newcomers, as they say. Um, I'd like a really big applause for them as well. Thanks a lot. And you've been...